Hello, and welcome to this CUBE conversation about how you can accelerate AI workloads with Dell PowerScale and NVIDIA SuperPod. I'm Rob Stretchy, Managing Director with theCUBE Research, and today we're going to start to delve into making AI real with data, another event we have on October 15th. By exploring what is an NVIDIA SuperPod, what Dell has done to achieve NVIDIA SuperPod certification, and why you should really care. To help me delve deep into this, I'm joined by Darren Miller, Director of Storage Solutions, Unstructured Data at Dell Technologies. Welcome on board, Darren. Thanks, Rob. Happy to be here. Yeah, so let's kind of start with really learning about what makes it special, what is the NVIDIA DGX SuperPod, and the architecture that brings it together with PowerScale, Dell's PowerScale. Sure. Uh, let's first start with highlighting the importance of Ethernet. Uh, for example, it's no surprise that Ethernet is predominant across all data centers today. And um, what we're seeing is Ethernet technologies in the 100 gigabit, 200 gigabit, even 400 gigabit being deployed commonly throughout data centers today. Tomorrow, this will be 800 uh, and then 1600 gigabits per second and 32 and 3200 and so on. So it's not surprising to us that, you know, there's customers interested in understanding how they can run their AI operations with their Ethernet infrastructures. Um, we believe, uh, you know, as AI workflows increase and become the predominant workflow throughout the data centers that Customers are going to need this high bandwidth. They're going to need these new high-performance Ethernet infrastructures. SuperPod is deployed in incremental uh, deployments, starting with you know uh, what NVIDIA calls scalable units, which make up uh, 32 DGX servers in a single scalable unit. The DGX SuperPod design with PowerScale was designed so that uh, we would offer and bring to our customers the first Ethernet-based storage fabric for, for, for DGX SuperPod. Uh, we believe that uh, it's going to have a tremendous impact in the businesses, uh, in the industry, and offer our customers a solution that is essentially a turnkey solution they can in integrate into their data centers almost immediately uh, with their existing infrastructures or uh, you know, network upgrades that they're planning for high performance Ethernet infrastructures. Yeah, I, I think that you hit on a really good point because again, uh, knowing SuperPod myself, a lot of times there's been in, InfiniBand in there and other things. And I, I think one of the things that I find is you never bet against Ethernet. I mean, that's one of the things. It's been around for years. It has right? been, and it keeps, like you said, it keeps on jumping in the capacity that it can have and really helps with this. And I, I think, again, I'm a big fan of Ethernet. Uh, I made you know bets against it once in my life when in the 90s with uh, ATM to the desktop. That was a mistake, but you know, again, you, we all learn. I, I think what's interesting is that you know, SuperPod is like, a reference architecture though. And it supports just a variety of different storage, uh, I guess you could say different storage solutions. What really are the advantages of you know, Dell's PowerScale and its integration or its reference architecture inside a DGX SuperPod? What, what really is that advantage? The DGX SuperPod scales incrementally by group sets of these 32 DGX servers. Uh, this scaling plays perfectly into PowerScale's core fundamental scalability, right? The PowerScale F710 platform is a single rack unit dense platform uh, that's clustered together and scales incrementally as you add nodes and additional nodes to the cluster architecture. Uh, this in combination with PowerScale's ability to handle high levels of concurrent connections um, and, and performance as we scale out the cluster um, offer a very dense, high performance system to run large scale infrastructure such as the AI infrastructures we're seeing today. Um, 
you know, in addition to power skills, other core fundamental capabilities like, you know, data reduction, we offer two to, run, two to one data reduction capabilities, uh, multi-protocol capabilities, multi-tenancy. Um, we have one of the most secure storage platforms in the business today, in the industry. And uh, we offer the latest in power and cooling technologies. You know, these in combination with uh, capabilities in the architectures that we're seeing, the scale of architectures for AI, offer features uh, that reduce total cost of ownership for customers and ultimately allow them to get the most out of their storage investment. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're hearing is the return on AI or right, ROI right. Exactly. Is, is super important because, again, you're, you're making these investments, you're solving for a certain use case. Not everybody's going out and, you know, building their own foundation model, hopefully, but they're, they're, doing, they're doing the uh, fine-tuning of that data. And one of these super pods would seem like a, a really, you know, good place. But one of those things from an ROI and a TCO perspective is really about how you keep the GPU's busy because you spent all this money on the GPUs, you've built out the you know DGX SuperPod. How are you how are you seeing that this allows you in power scale in particular helps to feed those GPUs? Because they're usually pretty uh, data hungry. Yes, well let's think about the Gen AI development cycle and, and how that works, right? So for example, data is staged and prepared. Uh, for the GPUs to then consume and ingest that data for training and fine-tuning operations. Uh, as that is taking place, those are seen as, you know, large amounts of concurrent connections from hundreds to thousands of GPUs in some of these larger infrastructures. Um, the storage system must be able to handle that level of concurrency as well as provide uh, the service requests to those GPUs as they're accessing data. You know, PowerScale, again, designed, uh, previously Isilon, right, designed the architecture to be able to handle these types of workloads. Um, you know, this along with capabilities like NFS over RDMA allow for high efficient, low congestion connectivity from your PowerScale node to those DGX nodes or DGX servers and GPUs. Uh, you know, another thing to consider is checkpointing. It's part of the cycle, right? As, as the fine tuning and training operations are taking place, we're now creating stateful copies of the models incrementally in the event that we have a failure along the way, right? We can revert back to that copy. But that copy, that, can, that checkpoint copy is seen from the storage system as a uh, sequential write to a large file, you know, and it could be multiples of those, right? So. Um, again, high concurrency, reads on one end of that cycle, writes during the cycle, and so on. So the storage systems must be able to provide the capabilities for the performance as well as that concurrency throughout those, those elements of, of the cycle. Um, one other thing I'd like to bring up is, uh, we haven't discussed yet, is a new multipath driver for PowerScale. Um, and the multipath driver allows I.O. from all the cluster nodes through a single mount point. So that's important for the superpod architectures because as a distributed compute architecture with multiple GPUs per node and, and, and so on, um, each DGX server can draw and write to the storage system from a single mount point. So as we scale the power scale cluster, we can provide that aggregated perfor performance for reads and writes uh, to the DGX systems. You know, and that you know, brings another great point of, in our latest software uh, of 1FS version 9.9, our engineering teams have yet again improved performance for reads and write operations in that code base. Um, and customers can take advantage of that whether they're a new customer or an existing customer by simply uh, upgrading their cluster architectures uh, non-destructively, I'd like to add, and um, uh, you know, at any point in time that they're ready to do that infrastructure upgrade. Yeah, and I, I can tell you how easy it is because I actually have managed uh, a power scale myself. I've actually deployed and 
powered and you know thank you for yeah that. yeah well no, no problem I, I think again it's one of these things that uh, I know how easy it is and to your point about having that single mount point I mean that is the magic of power scale is that it, how wide you can go within a single mount point and I think one of the things that is really key is that it's the total cost of ownership is going to be lower because if you already have power scale like you said and you you're upgrading and then using the multi-path driver and really tying it in you don't even have to move the data to start to bring it into the DGX SuperPod because you, you have, you know, a lot of people have a lot of data there and they may not want to copy it, you know, per se, and you're already doing the dedupe and things like that inside the power scale. It would seem like this would help with just a number of different use cases. What are some of the most popular use cases you're seeing for DGX SuperPods with the power scale? Yeah, I would say probably the most popular use case that we're seeing uh, is, is namely these fine-tuning and training operations for multiple types of models, right? Be it LLM types or, uh, you know, vision or, or images in healthcare, for example, is a good example of that. Um, and a lot of these very, very large infrastructures are being built and deployed by service providers. Right, so we're seeing large service provider deployments that are offering uh, GPU as a service, for example. So you really don't know what the workflow is going to be other than it's going to be something to do with Gen AI or general analytics, you know, uh, typically fine tuning or, or rag type implementation. Uh, there are very few customers nowadays that are actually developing models from scratch. We do see it occasionally, but not very often. Yeah. But yeah, like uh, the large institutions that are offering the as a service type deployments, that's where we're seeing these really, really big deployments. Yeah, and I, I know the whole DGX, it has all of the NVIDIA NIM stuff in it as well that helps them with all of right, the different yeah. changing out models and some of the workflow that goes along with it. It's all containerized and all that fun stuff. So it, it, it really is very flexible and I think helps that you have a flexible storage system underneath. So uh, this has been great. I really appreciate you coming on board and you know helping us get a better feeling for why this is important. So, hey, thanks for coming on board, Darren. Really appreciate you coming here to share this with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rob. Yep. It's been fun. It, absolutely. And thank you for joining us in this CUBE conversation about how you can accelerate AI workloads with Dell PowerScale and NVIDIA SuperPod. And we'll be and be sure to join us for Making AI Real with Data on October 15th, where we'll continue down this theme and really uh, delve into some more technology around this. Stay tuned and keep watching theCUBE, the leader in technology analysis and news. Thank you.